Okay, delighted to say I'm joined by Shane Dowling. I mean, obviously not in the greatest of circumstances ever, Shane. You've had to, to call a halt to your career after, I, t I suppose it's three knee uh, surgeries and the knee couldn't keep up with it anymore. But can I just ask you, when did you kind of realise that you're going to have to call time on it? Um, so uh, yesterday, two weeks, I, I had to get a, a scope on my knee. And to my mind, it was going to be, um, you know, just to get loose bodies removed from my knee. That showed up in an MRI scan and um, just urged me in just to remove the loose bodies and to clean it up and stitch it up in the way a way you go after after a couple of weeks of getting over the surgery and uh, he, he removed the loose bodies all right but when he went in he found another uh, osteochondral defect it's called you know basically another big hole in my cartilage and as I said that's the third one I've gotten the same knee and uh, even where the hole is now. Uh, the cartilage alongside it is is uh, disease, as he called it, and that's probably a matter of time before that goes as well. And I suppose the thing about it is, is when I got the procedure done last September um, to to fix the the hole that was there then, um, you know, it, he meant he fixed that hole, and in the previous nine months, you know, this new hole formed. If you if if, if you can say it with me, and that formed by basically doing little, little to no running on my knee, you know, just the minimal impact I was having on it. So I suppose you can only imagine what I suppose damage would be caused if I was running on it. Yeah, absolutely. And from your point of view then, when did you get the news that you're going to have to call time or were you told you should call time because the, if you don't, this is what's going to happen to your knee? Um, listen, they don't tell you you, you have to. Uh, essentially, it's, it's your own decision. But I mean, you know, you're told, listen, like I went down two weeks ago, I, I haven't been able to walk pain free for the last five months and uh, I was hoping that it was you know just about building up the muscle and the quads and, and getting that back and all different bits and pieces and this was essentially I realised there, there was more to it than that and um, yeah listen he just said listen, I have a hole in my knee right now I have a hole in my knee and I, I should be getting another uh, operation but that operation is you know three months in crutches six months of rehab I'm literally only after going through the process it's extremely demanding mentally um, you know what he did say to me was that it won't affect my day to day life or shouldn't affect my day to day life uh, walking and everything else with the way it is but that if I wanted to go back playing obviously it would be quite difficult when you've you know a bit of defect in your knee and then I suppose if I did go ahead with the procedure I won't be out for another nine months and by the time that nine months comes around the cartilage that's st still intact but diseased beside the current hole will probably go as well yeah so I mean when you have to sit there and make that decision that and I suppose with your family and people that are close to you, how hard does that hit you? I mean, there has to be tears with something like that. You're only 27. Yeah, it's, 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 you know, today actually hasn't been too bad. It hasn't been, in, in considering what the last 10 days were like, you know, mm. um, I met, um, I met, I met John Friday night. Uh, you know, he came in and, and, and we had a cup of tea and, and um, you know, I just said, listen, John, I, I think it's all over for me. I said, I don't think I can I can do any more. And it's affecting me mentally. And, you know, the club is starting back up. And uh, I'm not going to be tagged out. I'm not going to be able to run across the field with water. And, you know, I'm lying to people every day and, and people. And I don't want to be doing that anymore. Um, especially when I, I said it's inevitable. And uh, I said, there's no point in delaying it any longer. And I just have to face the music now, unfortunately. And he was one of maybe 10 or 15 people that I met individually or spoke to individually. And, each one of them conversations was as hard as the next. Mm. Do, do you, have you given up hope of playing for Nipirsig again, or, or is that the reason you're stepping away from Inter County because you want to play with Nipirsig again? No, I'm stepping away from Inter County because you know, I, you know, everybody knows the workload that's involved. You know, and like first of all, I don't know if I if I'd even be able to play a game early, let alone take the demands of what's required. Mm. Uh, in terms of the peer shake, I said it to the boys this morning. The answer to that is I don't know, uh, and I don't know when I know. Uh, I just have to see how I how I get over the procedure two weeks ago. So I'm back walking pain free, which is which is great because I haven't been able to do that in a while. And um, I just hope to maybe in a couple of weeks time I'll be able to go for a jog and take it from there and see. Mm, yeah, I, I presume you felt a lot of love today. There, you know, there's a huge amount of retweets of of your message that you put out on Twitter and a huge amount of positive comments. I am absolutely humbled and have gotten emotional by the response. I, I've, I've said it before, like for a lot of people out there, you know, I'm only, I'm a 27 year old guy. I'm living here in the heart of Cardiff and I'm, I'm a normal person. I, you know, I see these things and sometimes people might, might think that you don't or, 
I've gotten all the messages. I see all the nice stuff that's been said, and it genuinely has made me emotional. But I'm genuinely humbled that um, that the people of Limerick and and, and indeed the country um, have come out and said the kind words that they have said. And former players, current players from Limerick and all parts, referees coming out and even giving me telling me that I was nice to deal with. Imagine that. <laughs> so uh, you know, it, all that is is uh, and uh, like you know. Anyone that has texted me or, or contacted me individually uh, via message, I, I haven't gotten back to anybody. But I can assure you, in the coming day or two, I will be sitting down and responding to every single person that contacted me individually, in, uh, individually, because it's meant a lot, and I don't take that for granted. And it's really, really, um, you know, it means a lot to me. I was kind of going over your career there earlier today once your announcement came out, and I was thinking of the. 2013 when you come on as a young lad and you hit those frees against Clare in the semi-final under huge pressure 2014 those goals against Tipperary the one-handed point against Kilkenny uh, 2018 I'm, I've skipped a couple of years there but 2018 you know the huge impact the goals on the big days like I know it's you're 27 it's, it's horrible to have to step away but some unbelievable memories incredible uh, this might have been you know, I don't want this to be about my knee. I, I don't want this to be about my injury. I want this to be about the career that I've had, and I've said it to everybody because that's 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 what I want, right? And I, as I said to you, Shane, right? I'm I'm a normal guy. I'm I'm no different to anybody else. I I just I just wanted to play Ireland for Limerick, right? Then I wanted to try win that Ireland for Limerick. I didn't know if it was ever going to be possible, and then to have created moments that I can look back on, you know, and be very proud of, I suppose, is um. You know, sometimes I, I get stuck for words because I don't realise how lucky I've been. And today I could look at it and I could say, I'm fierce, I'm lucky, and you know, as if the whole world is coming down on top of me. It's disappointing and it's heartbreaking. There is no two ways about that. But I look back and I look back in them moments and I say, you know what? I'm one lucky, lucky guy to have been involved and been a part of a great team. I got to play with the best players. I, I, I got to play against the best players that this, the GA has ever come across. Uh, you know, played against the best managers. Uh, I've met incredible people and I genuinely consider myself to be a very, very lucky guy. Because, you know, even in 2015, I think it was, there was, there was a, a game against Clare and I think you'd, you'd hit a ball wide and I, I went to interview you after the game. I didn't even know this ball had gone wide, but you straight away just pointed it out and said before they bring it up on the Sunday game later, it, it was wide. So you're always very open talking with the media, but during that same interview, you started talking about the bit of... I suppose criticism that was coming your way because you still hadn't been promoted from you know tier two of the league at that stage and you just said it's mm -hmm. time that people in Limerick got behind us and you know there had been you know a few players had the back cut off and that sort of thing but things really did turn in the last couple of years and now you go down to the Gaelic grounds and the queues of kids looking for your autographs afterwards it's just it's a world away from that well what's happening now is what I always wanted you know, and I suppose looking back on it, you know, I was young, I was green, and even maybe I'm, maybe I still maybe say too much at times, but you know, looking back and I can understand why you know there was that bit of you know aggravation, whatever word you want to use, you know, it's, it's just people in Limerick just wanted to, they were, were so passionate and they just wanted a bit of success, you know, even and even if you weren't having success, they just wanted you to to show something on the field where. You know, where you know you, you were just so proud to be playing, you know, and that you were given a performance that people could go away happy with. You know, obviously it's great to be winning. That goes without saying. But people just wanted to, to, to be following a team that they they were extremely proud of, and uh, it's not that they were never proud of, of, of teams in the past, obviously. But um, you know, we we're just craving success, and they, they went for so. It, it was it was they were been starved for success for so long, and I look back then and like the Hearty Cup in 2010, 2011. You know, the Pearson won their first county title in 2011, and obviously went on then to, to win Munsters and All Irelands. The Fitzgibbon Cup teams, while I know they were based in Limerick, they had still a lot of Limerick players on it. The Limerick under 21 teams, the minor teams, you know, and the Pearson win the All Ireland club. I'm not just saying it because it was my own club, but that was huge as well. That the Limerick club went up and won a senior title, and I think everybody in Limerick could could sense there was something coming, and that's why after 2015 that's why i think people started to get behind us a small because they could sense what was coming and since then you know the, and i said it i said it in my statements but i genuinely mean it the limerick supporters and the, and the, the people in limerick they, i i just seem to have a great rapport with them and uh I, I i love meeting them i love chatting to them and uh i'm one of them now and i'd be i'd be shouting the boys on and uh, that's 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 the way it is and the way, the way it has to be 
And just a final question then, do you have a favourite memory from, from your hurling career, whether that's with Napiersic or with Limerick? I, I don't like uh, I, I I don't like differentiating uh, Napiersic and Limerick because they're, they're two different teams or you know and they, they both mean uh, they both mean something in, in, in two different ways. Uh, if to be honest, it'd be very hard to pick uh, to pick one memory. Um, but I, I think the day we came down the Ennis Road and the open tap bus on the way to get a grounds for a homecoming on the Monday and my mum and dad. Uh, Standing on the wall outside the Gaelic grounds, I think that would do it for me. That's brilliant stuff, Shane. Look, I really appreciate you giving me your time today because I know you've an awful lot of media requests in, and you have been an absolutely brilliant player for Limerick and the Pierce again. I hope you can get back onto the field again. So thanks very much, Shane. Super. Thank you, Shane.